In New Orleans, a ship called Genesis arrives at the docks to deliver several containers of mysterious cargo, which will be distributed throughout the city. Meanwhile Biggie gathers a bunch of dealers including Newt and presents them with the latest upper, it's called power and it gives people a special ability for 5 minutes. Biggie gives the uppers to the dealers for free and even lets them sell it at any price they want. Sometime later, Robin sneaks out of her home to sell some power on the streets. Three teenage boys notice she's a small girl, so they try to overpower her to steal the uppers. A fight ensues as Robin tries to defend herself, but in the middle of the struggle they're interrupted by police officer Frank, who makes them stop by showing his gun. A boy puts the upper in his mouth, intending to gain the power to fight him, so Frank explains that power has hurt people or even made them explode. As the boy hesitates, Frank takes the power and arrests Robin, causing the guys to run away. Once they're alone, Frank lets go of Robin and reveals he's her friend. He buys power from her and even gives her an old motorbike as a birthday present. The next day, Art goes to an apartment in the slums to look for Newt, who points a gun at him from behind the door and refuses to open it when Art asks where power comes from. Using a trick to open the lock anyway, Art makes his way inside and discovers Newt has become incredibly disfigured because of his addiction. He's also keeping a huge stash of power in his apartment with an alligator as a guard. Next Art threatens Newt with a weapon, and when Newt tries to grab his, Art shoots it away. While Art steals Newt's phone, Newt runs to hide in another room and takes power to activate his ability, which sets his whole body on fire. After a failed attack that starts a fire in the room, Newt starts chasing Art through the building, causing him to fall off an edge. Art manages to hold on at the last second and jumps into the lower floor while Newt feels his body weaken, so he takes three more doses and goes after Art, only for a neighbor to throw water at him. Art uses the chance to rush to the bathroom and soak his jacket with water, so when Newt comes for him, Art covers him with the jacket and pushes him into a filled tub. At first Newt refuses to talk, so Art starts punching him until he confesses he got the power from Biggie. At that moment Newt's body starts shaking, so Art runs away right before Newt explodes. This causes him to have flashbacks of a car accident he was in with his daughter. Meanwhile Robin checks on her sick mother Irene before going to school. While in class, Robin texts Newt to ask for more power, and the one responding is Art using Newt's phone. Suddenly the teacher calls her out for not paying attention and asks her how she expects to have a future. A friend mentions she's a great rapper and starts to create a beat for Robin to freestyle, so a nervous Robin begins rapping against the system and her teacher. Her classmates record everything and cheer for her, only to then reveal this was just a fantasy in Robin's head. The teacher asks her to give up her phone or go to the principal's office, so she chooses to leave. Later the cops surround a bank where a criminal has taken hostages with a mysterious power. Frank takes over a co-worker's spot and when nobody is watching, he takes power and starts a timer on his watch. He goes inside through the back door and finds the hostages, unaware that the thief is moving nearby unnoticed because he has camouflage powers. The guy hits Frank to knock him down then runs away with the money, so Frank immediately starts chasing him by following the bags. As his skin continuously changes colors, the thief runs and hits a few civilians before stealing a bicycle. A car ends up crashing against him, so he drops the bike and gets on a tram instead. When he checks the bag, a powder bomb explodes and gives away his location, so now Frank can follow him on the bicycle. The driver stops when Frank shows his badge and the thief runs away again, going through a cafe before ending up in an alley. Frank follows him and falls, allowing the guy to take his gun and shoot him. However Frank's power is to be super tough and the bullet just bounces, allowing Frank to quickly recover and finally grab the guy, beating up him with extra strength until his captain makes him stop. After everything is over, the captain scolds Frank for using power and asks for his gun and badge. Frank points out that criminals have an advantage over them if they have superpowers, so this is the only way to fight fairly. There are also higher-ups often coming to cover up the situation, so Frank can guess the captain knows more than he says and offers to work off the record. The captain decides to give Frank a picture of Art and tells him he's believed to be the source of power, so they need to catch him to end their problems. In the evening, Art waits in the restaurant where Robin usually meets Newt. When Robin arrives, he watches her from afar but doesn't approach her. Robin doesn't see Newt and decides to leave, only to find her bike tire has been slashed. Suddenly Art grabs her and throws her in the trunk of his truck to then take her to a secluded area, threatening to go after Irene if she doesn't talk. Robin agrees to cooperate and is let out, telling him she got the power from Newt but doesn't know anything else. Then Art shows her a picture of a woman and a bald man, but she doesn't recognize either of them. While they talk, Robin sends Frank a text asking for help, so Art immediately takes her phone away. Next Art makes her call a number he found on Newt's phone and she pretends to be a dealer in trouble, so she's told to go to a specific supermarket and ask for alligator wine. The duo makes it to the market and while Robin asks for the wine, Art gets distracted by a random customer and loses track of Robin. The girl is taken to see a man in the back called Quayo and instead of asking him about the source like Art told her, she tells Quayo all about the scary dude waiting outside. Quayo takes some power and goes to confront Art, who threatens Quayo with scissors. His henchmen immediately come to help him, but Art turns out to be an excellent fighter and goes hand to hand against everyone without breaking a sweat. 
At the same time the office Robin is in starts moving and it's revealed the room is inside a huge truck, which is trying to leave. She tries to get out, but the door has been locked. Art continues to knock out or shoot down the guys, and sometimes the bullets hit the truck, so Robin has to hide to avoid being hit. Once all the henchmen are down, Art tries checking on Robin, allowing Quayo to shoot him by surprise. The bullet hits Art but he keeps on moving, shooting Quayo to death too. Then Art finally opens the door to rescue Robin, however the pain causes him to start hallucinating and think Robin is his lost daughter Tracy. Thankfully Robin's voice snaps him out of it and he notices another door, which he shoots open to discover a secret computer room with monitors that track all of Power's users. Art realizes that the distributor is giving away power for free because he's using the locals as lab rats to test the product. They also find a notification that mentions a presentation happening in around two hours. Meanwhile Quayo manages to push the bullets out of his body thanks to the effects of power still going. While Art is distracted by the screen, Robin runs back into the market to ask for help, only to be found and hit by Quayo. When he's about to stab her, Art tackles him to the ground and stabs him over and over until the power effect runs out and Quayo dies. Robin tries to escape and finds the doors locked, so she grabs a brick to break it. However Art begs for help and confesses he just wants to find his daughter as he offers Robin a bunch of money before passing out. Moments later Art wakes up in a vet's office, where Robin is stitching his wounds. Once he's better, he leaves for the special event, and Robin forces him to take her with him by stealing the car keys. In the meantime, Frank is worried about Robin and goes to her home, only to overhear some cops harassing Irene. Frank sneaks into the house through the window and changes clothes to pretend to be Irene's lover coming to her defense. He whispers to her that he's Robin's friend before confronting the cops, asking them to show their badges and a warrant for the camera. The cops immediately leave, so Frank runs after them and uses some tape to stick the phone to their vehicle, that way he can track them down. On the way to the event, Art explains he used to be a soldier and was put in experiments for power by a corporation called Teleos. He took power once and almost killed him but he survived, unlike his army friends. Eventually he quit and started a new life, but when Tracy was born, she had permanent powers because the component was already in Art's seed. When Teleos heard about this, they wanted to take Tracy away to experiment on her, so Art tried running away with her. Unfortunately they were followed and the henchmen forced their car to crash. Art got stuck and couldn't move, so he had to watch how Tracy was kidnapped. As he shares the story, the memory mixes with reality and he starts driving like crazy, but fortunately Robin snaps him out of it before they crash. Eventually they make it to the presentation location and Art makes Robin wait outside. When Art gets in, a guard tries to stop him because he isn't on the list, so Art quickly knocks him out and finds a Teleos card among the paperwork. Then Art takes the guard's jacket and sneaks into the presentation pretending to be an employee. Biggie is presenting power to a South American cartel leader, explaining his goal is to reach the next evolutionary step. They've taken the DNA from different animals to gather the best survival skills so humans can have them too, and Biggie hopes that with his guest's investment one day they can create a permanent version of power. Meanwhile outside, Frank finds Robin and tries to convince her that Art is behind power, but she refuses to believe him. Back to Biggie, he asks a woman to get inside a tank and take some power. Her skin immediately begins getting frosty and it's revealed she can control her body temperature. While she breathes frost on the glass for fun, Art silently approaches a bartender and kills him with an ice statue. Then Art approaches Biggie with a gun hidden under a tray, but Biggie recognizes his face. Art tries to threaten him, but at that moment an employee finds the body and screams, so he hits him and grabs him hostage instead. A bunch of people in the room take out their weapons and Art threatens to kill Biggie, but the cartel lady doesn't care and tries to leave with the case of power. Then more of Biggie's men come in to stop the lady and one of them takes a dose of power, only to immediately explode. This triggers a gunfight between Biggie's and the lady's men, causing both sides to quickly begin losing people as Art joins the fight as well. Two bodyguards manage to cover the cartel lady to help her escape while Biggie tries to run to safety, dropping his tablet in the process. This causes the tank to start failing and the woman loses control of her power. She screams in pain while her boyfriend tries kicking the tank to break it to no avail. Art beats the guy up while Biggie keeps avoiding him, and eventually the frost takes over the woman's body, slowly freezing every inch of her skin until she's dead. Art manages to grab Biggie and shakes him as he demands answers, only to be hit by an employee to start a hand-to-hand -hand fight. After pounding her head on the tank, Art uses her own taser to knock her out then goes after Biggie again. He shoots Biggie's fingers off and shows him the picture, so Biggie finally explains those are Dr. Gardner, the head of the project, and her bodyguard Wallace, who took Tracy. They can be found on the boat called Genesis, which carries the whole operation. At that moment Frank gets inside and tries to arrest Art, only for Art to quickly disarm him. As they argue over Robin, Biggie takes a dose of power and begins transforming into a huge monster that hits the ceiling and causes the whole building to shake. Bullets do nothing to him. So Art runs away and Frank catches up to him by sliding under Biggie. The duo takes a back corridor and as they run, Art opens a bunch of gas canisters while Frank steals some power. 
When they make it to the exit, Art shoots the gas canisters and causes a big explosion that kills Biggie and sends a shockwave to the street before Biggie's hand lands on a car. Afterward Frank arrests Art, and when Robin tries to defend him, Art just tells her to go home. While Robin gets on her bike, she sees Wallace among the cops and recognizes him from Art's picture, so she decides to follow him. Meanwhile Art tells Frank that in a few seconds his captain will tell him to take him somewhere else instead of the precinct. His prediction comes true and Frank realizes his captain is part of Taleo's bribed men in the force. Frank finally hears Art out and learns his daughter has been the sample they used to make power, which will spread to the rest of the world if they don't stop it. They agree to work together and make a plan, so by the time Taleo's men surround the car, Frank is already gone. Afterward Art is taken to the Genesis and meets with Gardner, who was the one to experiment on him during his army days. Robin is watching nearby, and Frank is furious to see her when he arrives. After a pointless argument, Frank gives her a special earbud so she can keep guard and inform him of anything happening in the area. Then Frank takes some power and approaches the guard, who shoots him down before going away, leaving the door open because he thinks Frank is dead. Frank quickly recovers thanks to his power but loses the bud that connects him to Robin as he sneaks inside, knocking out the guard by surprising him from behind. Worried about the lost connection, Robin decides to sneak in too and hides inside a van, which is loaded onto the ship. Next, Robin searches around the control room and finds Frank cuffing a bunch of unconscious workers. On the monitors, the guys escorting Art ask for the door to be opened, so Robin presses a button as a cover. They realize there's a map of the ship and full access to all the doors there, so Frank takes a gun and the earbud, asking Robin to guide him while he goes to save Art. After he leaves Robin closes the very heavy door for safety. At that moment the alarms go off and Wallace takes power so he can punch the doors down by force. While looking at the different monitors, Robin finds Tracy and gets distracted, so another powered guard finds Frank, quickly disarming him. A hand-to-hand -hand fight begins, but Frank can't cause any damage because the dude is made of rubber. In the struggle, Frank loses the earbud again and Robin has to talk to him through the speakers, so Wallace finds her location and begins punching her door. Frank gets stuck in a tight rubbery hold, but he manages to punch the guy and release himself before dragging the man to a nearby door. Robin immediately closes it and the guy's arm gets trapped, meaning it'll break when the effect of power stops. At that moment Wallace finally brings down the thick door, only to discover Robin has broken the computer with an axe and escaped through the emergency hatch. As the ship takes off, Frank takes more power before retrieving his gun and continuing his search. Meanwhile Art reveals he's had a power dose in his mouth all along and convinces the guard to let him go to avoid the consequences of his powers. At that moment both Wallace and Frank find him, so Wallace punches Frank before turning to Art. Frank passes his gun to Art, who shoots Wallace twice, easily killing him. Back to Robin, she searches the lab area and hears a guard coming, so she hides and waits for the right moment to knock him out from behind. Then she takes his keycard and finally gets access to the lab rooms, where she finds Tracy and notices the scars on her body from the experiments. At first Tracy is wary, but she immediately becomes happy when she hears her dad is there. Suddenly Gardner comes looking for Tracy too, but the girls manage to hide under a hatch just in time. Then they run off and on their way out, a random plant becomes healthy again when Tracy touches it. Soon they make it to the deck and reunite with Frank and Art, who finally hugs his daughter again. The group tries to find their way out among all the containers only to suddenly be blocked by a guard with the power to make his bones grow out as weapons. A fight ensues and the guy cuts Art's weapon in half with his bones, so Art picks up a metal rod to defend himself. Frank tries to take the girls to the lifeboat and uses his body as a shield against the incoming bullets, but Robin sees Art in danger and goes back to help him. She frees a hook to knock out the guard, then Art kills him by stabbing him with his own bones. Afterward Art rushes to the lifeboat to reunite with the others, but Robin is caught by the guards and Gardner asks for Tracy in exchange for Robin's life. Art comes out and takes power, gaining the ability of a pistol shrimp. This allows him to vaporize the water around him and shoot extremely hot shock waves that kill all the henchmen in seconds. Robin jumps out of the way just in time as all the containers are brought down and a crane falls on top of Gardner. Art passes out because his body can't stand so much power, meaning he's about to die. However Tracy immediately comes to his side and heals him with her powers. Now the group can get on the lifeboat and finally escape. Sometime later Art informs Frank he's leaving with Tracy to start a new life. Frank plans to bring the story to a journalist so he can reveal all the corruption in the force and Robin goes back to her mom, promising to take care of her with the money Art has given her as thanks.